And Virginia Tech elected to receive. So Brad Cooper will kick off to Mike Emo and Cedric Humes. And it comes down to Humes, the sophomore from Virginia Beach. He returns across the 25 to the 27-yard line. A 17-yard return. Tech on offense, led by Brian Randall, the junior from Williamsburg, Virginia. It isn't often you hear a coach say a player has been perfect. But when we spoke with Frank Beamer, the head coach of the Hokies yesterday, he said, Randall has been perfect, accurate in his throwing and decision-making, a great threat, both running and throwing the ball. They open in the eye formation with the fullback Doug Eastlick in front of Kevin Jones. And Randall lost the snap and was forced to fall on it. Back at the 24-yard line, a loss of two on the play. The rest of the Virginia Tech offense, Jones working on a string of four straight 100-yard rushing games. The wideouts are Hamilton and Wilford, and we'll see three tight ends, including Keith Willis. And the offensive line, a good group, anchored by Jake Grove, the All-American candidate at center. Jimmy Martin, the left tackle, playing with an injured elbow, an injury suffered in practice during the 10-day span between games. Each of these teams was off this past Saturday. They're working on a week and a half of preparation. Jones up the middle to the 28, perhaps the 29. West Virginia with a unique 3-3-5 look on defense. The front three of Hunter Lynch and Bluford, a bit undersized. Outstanding linebackers, that's the strength of the defense with Lenort between Wiley, another All-American candidate, and Jerko. And in the secondary, it's Jones, King, Washington, Lorello, and Frazier. And onto the field comes D'Angelo Hall, top of your screen, nearest the Virginia Tech sideline. The three-way threat, offense, defense, and special teams. And they go to him a lot in just this situation, third down. Whistle stopped the play. Sean, right at the top, we talked about whether Virginia Tech can handle the crowd. Craig, two out of the three plays, they've not handled it. Fumbled snap, and then a delay of game. Uh, you know, exactly right on the road for the first time in a hostile environment. And, and I said, you know, earlier on, Brian Randall's got to play poised, good football. He can't make mistakes. And exactly what West Virginia wanted to have happen here at the beginning of a ball game. There are two fouls on the play. Delay against the offense. Dead ball. Personal foul. Defense. It was Pac-Man Jones of West Virginia who committed a terrible penalty. The personal foul. And here it is. The whistle stops. And here comes Jones. Boom. Laying the hit on Ernest Wilford. Yeah, I'm not so sure because it's pretty loud. I'm going to give Jones the benefit of the doubt there. I mean, he sees a guy coming across into his territory, and if he hasn't heard the whistle, then, you know, can he hold up? I wonder if the official didn't like the idea that the, the hand went towards the head. And, and I'll tell you this. Coming out as an official in a game like this, a hostile environment, you send the message right now, we're not going to tolerate any kind of excessive hitting in this ball game. Well, that's a big penalty. It would have been third down and 13 for Virginia Tech instead first and 10 at the 39-yard line. West Virginia has been penalty prone. Virginia Tech, the least penalized team in the Big East. Jones, a nice bounce to the outside. And lowers his shoulder for a couple more. Out near the 44-yard line. Jones, the junior from Chester, Pennsylvania, taken down by Lance Frazier. Question is... He's your Heisman guy, isn't he? Well, I said he's a Heisman guy. I don't know that he's my Heisman guy, but a lot of guys might vote for him. He's had four straight games over 100 yards. There's no question he's a talented running back. Will he show up in the big games now? They have some big ones coming up, including tonight. He's got to perform on the big stage. Well, in this game here tonight, he's going to get a lot of two tight ends, power football, a chance to go against his 3-3-5 defense. If he's got it in it, tonight's a big night. I saw the graphic. He wore number seven last year. We'll tell you the reason why he changed the number in a moment. Here's Randall. Breaks one tackle, then goes down at the 45. Fred Bluford made the first hit. Jones changed his number because after the San Francisco Bowl at the end of last season, he returned home to find that the son of his grade school coach had died. And when he played for that coach, he wore number 25, so he changed to the number 25 in memory of his former coach's late son. 
He's worked hard, and, and he's a good player. I, and again, this is one of the reasons I'm glad I'm here. It's a great environment, and there are a lot of good players on this field. D'Angelo Hall back on the field. He's one of the great players. He's at the bottom of your screen now, and Randall looked in his direction for a moment, then through to the other side for a first down. Ernest Wilford, their leading receiver for the season, almost cost himself the first down as he curled back near the marker. But hey. they mark him down at the 49 of West Virginia hey. and a first down. Craig, I, I'd say this was pretty perfect. He looked left, looked right, then comes back to his third option on this one to make the play. That's and, a pretty good quarterback. And Wilford had the time to get over there and get set. There was two receivers and three men around him. Blue jerseys have to go attract and find the white jerseys. And a lot of time for Randall for the ball. Virginia Tech averaging 45 points per game. They're the highest scoring team in the conference. Movement before the snap. Almost looked like the center forgot the snap count. He held on to it so Fire long with everybody snap. else moving around him. Offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Dunn and Keith Willis on the right end of the line. Those guilty of the early movement for Coach Beamer. I, I really think they're having trouble hearing down there. I think the crowd, the emotion early in the ball game. Virginia Tech is struggling with that. They have not been on the road very often. Five out of their six games were at home. The other one might as well have been a home game. It was at Rutgers. High formation on first and 15. The Hokies back at their own 46. And a toss to Jones in trouble. He shed one tackle, but still out of bounds for a loss. And there is a flag down on the play. They mark Jones out at the 45 for a loss of one. Scott Jerko up from his linebacker position. He's a former walk-on holding the call against Virginia Tech. Jerko grew up right here in Morgantown, dreamed of playing for the Mountaineers coming out of high school. His only Division I offer was at Virginia Military. He had a number of Division II and one AA offers. His parents had Take the MI. Take the money. <laughs> take the scholarship. He said, no, I'm going to walk on, and now he is on scholarship and playing at a much higher level. Holding. Gets the offense. Ten-yard penalty. Still first down. Oh, you mentioned Jerko walking on here. The first time he walked into this stadium, he was two years old and couldn't get it out of his blood. He wanted to be a part of the blue and gold here. I think it's remarkable the success they've had in this program over the years when you consider on a good year in this state they will have five or six prospects, high school football players who go on to play Division I football. There are only about 1.8 million people in the entire state of West Virginia. Gives you an idea of what a remarkable job Don Nealon did for the two decades he was the head coach here. Here's Jones with some running room outside. Now he's chopped down at the 46. They need to get to the 39 of West Virginia for a first down. Brian King and Lance Frazier combining on the stop of Jones, a game of 10. You know, you get a feel here in, this, in the game early on that both teams kind of feeling themselves out. And I think defensively, West Virginia is figuring out if you don't tackle Jones low, you're not going to tackle him. I think you're right. And he can set you up. I mean, he had a little hesitation move on that last run. You're going to have a hard time figuring out where to hit him because he has a lot of stuff he can pull at you. Four wide receivers spread the formation on second down and 15. Nearly five minutes played. Here comes a blitz. Randall got away and then dumped it off. To Jones with running room and very close to a first down at the 40-yard line of the Mountaineers. He's a little slow to get up, as is Pac-Man Jones, who was in on the tackle for Randall, West Virginia. Randall has to make plays on the road. This is one of the things we said was going to be important to them. I'm impressed with the pressure they're putting on him at times, but his ability, you see, he, didn't, he just didn't run, did he? No, no he, he was looking to throw that ball. Hey, nice job. Third down and one. Kevin Jones, the lone back. And a timeout called by Charge Virginia timeout. Tech. Virginia Tech. West Virginia has not had the ball yet. Still scoreless in Morgantown. Virginia Tech. The Hokies with 
Third down and one at the 40-yard line of West Virginia on the opening drive of the game. Three tight ends on the field. One of them, Jeff King, went in motion. Jones threw a big hole on the right. And he's down at the 27-yard line with a 13-yard gain and a first down. Pretty methodical, and they're just gashing them right now. This comes off the right side, Craig. Watch the good block, and they're just driving them inside. Jones has his choice of a couple of holes, goes outside, and I don't know if this 3-3-5 defense can stack up in short yardage situations. Well, they're going to have to fill lanes and be a lot more responsible with their assignments, and they're going to have to get low on Jones. Jones impressive with the power that you show him right now. Drive more than six minutes long now for the Hokies, primarily on the ground. And it's Jones across the 25, and that's all. The Hokies are averaging 249 yards per game on the ground. That's fourth in the nation. But we've talked about their schedule. They really haven't faced the iron no. of Division I a college football so oh, And West Virginia has. West Virginia's had to play Wisconsin. They've had some tough opponents out there, Miami. And so when, when you talk about that, that just gets them battle-tested. I, I think you're right about that. And we're going to find out tonight. Angelo Hall on the field again at the bottom of the screen. Randall looks in his direction, throws in his direction, intercepted! Brian King, who had the game-clinching interception at Blacksburg last year, haunts Brian Randall again. Last year, he said he baited Randall into the throw, and it looked like he did again this time yeah. with Hall. Yeah, look at Hall. What happens there? There's the void. Here's your void. The play is late. The, the ball is late getting there. Randall's got to come up and throw that football. He's late. He's absolutely late. And King did nothing but read his eyes and wait and come over. Baited him again. He baited him to throw that ball. That's a good job. How about King? How do you keep catching balls when you got a bad wrist like he has? He's had wrist problems throughout his career. He's had pins in the wrist. The wrist passed it. And yet the senior was able to hang on for the interception. West Virginia on offense for the first time tonight. Quincy Wilson took a hit from his own teammate and bounced ahead for one yard, tackled by Coles Colas, the defensive end. A no huddle offense is West Virginia. It's not always a hurry up, but they're up to the line pretty quickly here. Rasheed Marshall, the quarterback. Going deep, there was contact and a flag thrown. He was looking for Chris Henry, who collided with D'Angelo Hall, and the flag thrown at the 31-yard line. I think D'Angelo Hall was shocked because nobody really challenges at him, and they go after him on the second play of the game offensively. And Henry's a big target, a big receiver. You see the slip there with D'Angelo Hall? You know, maybe a little tardy with his footwork. It's slippery. We were the three of us were on the field before the game. It rained here first. earlier. Catch the defense. Give me a spot. First down. And, and, and that water on that field is still down there. It's slippery. If it wasn't with that contact, that might have been a touchdown. Yeah. Because it looked like Henry was going to run right by him, and there was no safety help. You're looking at Rasheed Marshall, the junior from Pittsburgh. Only about an hour and change up the road from Morgantown. They've had trouble throwing the ball this year. They'd like to be balanced, but they've been predominantly a running team. They've run more than twice as many running plays this season as they have pass plays. They work out of the spread offense. And the handoff to Quincy Wilson. That looked a lot like that run on the screen pass against Miami. There's Wilson again just lowering his head and running over Brandon Manning. Chris Henry, McQuell Henderson, and Rayshon Bolden, the three wide outs in the spread, and Josh Bailey, the tight end. The offensive line has been a problem. They lost their best lineman before the season started, Tim Brown. They've used ten different combinations up front. And you saw tonight's group with Watson, the junior college transfer, now in a tackle. That's Quincy Wilson, he's, he's all man he's, back there, there. There was some wood delivered right then. Jeremy Hines, also a new starter at center tonight. Ben Timmons out with an injury. Wilson running the other way, flag down. Wilson down near the 30. Boy, there might have been a hold against West Virginia on the corner. 